Hi, I'm Frank Diamond, the Managing Editor of Infection Control Today, where we're giving infection preventionists the tools they need to battle COVID-19 and to face whatever comes after COVID-19, the new normal. This week, today, Wednesday, and Friday, we're going to be doing that by offering the best tool in any healthcare provider's arsenal, knowledge. Sharon Ward Ford is an infection control consultant, and she'll be joining me all week to offer brief tutorials on certain elements of an infection preventionist's job. Sharon writes for us and hosted an excellent webinar for us back in May on these topics. She's also a member of our editorial advisory board. Sharon, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, th thanks for having me so much. Okay, today's topic, keeping track of environmental services. What's the best approach and has that approach changed at all since COVID-19? So um, I think I IPs and uh, environmental services typically work very collaboratively, um, part of a team, including others, uh, nursing managers and supply chain to help keep things moving in a hospital setting. I don't think that's changed. Maybe with COVID, it's an even tighter collaboration, I would hope, because uh, we know during the surge of COVID, there were shortages of uh, disinfectants and cleaning supplies. So we're hoping that maybe now that things in some areas slowed down, it gave them a chance to sit down with all the stakeholders and figure out what do we need to do in the way of our uh, cleaning and disinfecting supplies moving forward. And probably one of the things they should be thinking about is, I don't wanna say hoarding, but kind of stockpiling what mm -hmm. they may need and then um, using their products judiciously, making sure that staff is trained on appropriate dilutions um, and just kind of monitoring the usage of the product so that they don't run out. How close to uh, infection prevention and the managers of UES teams work in your experience? Well, um, I, was, uh, I worked very closely with the managers of EVS, and I know at other facilities, IPs also work with those managers. And um, although EVS is in charge of the cleaning process, IPs work carefully with them to make sure the process is followed by auditing it frequently. And um, both sides provide feedback to each other just to make sure everything follows best practices. A lot of places with turnover, you need to um, keep on top of what's actually happening out on the hospital floors, and a really good collaboration helps make that happen. So there's no turf wars that you ever heard, hear of or anything like that? Well, I mean, with anything, when this is not your area per se, you need to tread lightly. and. Um, in healthcare, most people know that we're all on the same page. It's patients and staff safety first. And if you're not criticizing, but contributing to best practices for the staff, um, in my experience, it's, it was well received. P you know, EVS sees things from their side, IPC see things a little different. So the, the two working together really, um, I think it's a good way to um, keep things copacetic. How, what was what was the makeup or, or how, when you saw a team really function well, and it seems like you alluded to your own experience, what was the secret sauce that made, it, made that cooperation work? Um, well, for me, I think it was, I didn't come into their department as the expert on EVS. I came into their department asking them to show me what they do so I can learn. And I think when you let the experts be the experts and then share their knowledge, um, it builds trust. And when I did have suggestions, they were suggestions. It wasn't hardball, you need to do this, you need to do that. It was pretty much maybe we should try this kind of an approach. So I think um, treading lightly and respecting departments for the experts they're supposed to be, but then also, um, adding your opinion or you know, what you've read in the literature kind of opens it up for discussion. And I think discussion is important rather than Decronian decron rules, you will do this this way. Uh, any, ever any need to, to call on a referee? And uh, who would be the referee? <laughs> um, so with the managers, of course, there's always a director, but it, it's in my experience at least, um, the managers were very well invested in doing the right thing for patients and staff. 
and the EVS staff workers who actually did the cleaning were very prideful and proud of their work. And um, I think the thing that went the farthest was thanking them each and every time I encountered them for being there, doing the great job that they do. And I would always say to them, you know, you're an infection preventionist just from the different side of the patient experience. You're at the bedside preventing those infections. And Frank, nothing brought a bigger smile to their faces than acknowledging how important the work is that they do. How important is that work going to be going forward and how can infection preventionists help them do that? Um, referring, of course, to COVID-19. So COVID-19, um, in some instances, environmental services was removed from actually cleaning the, the COVID positive patient rooms just because um, there was a need to minimize exposure. How that is in some places now with fewer patients, um, EVS is probably back in there doing their job. And I think um, healthcare workers and IPs can acknowledge that it's dangerous for them. They're in those rooms for an extended period of time. So it's really important to acknowledge that there is some level of risk to them. It's important to make sure they're trained and competencyed on how to wear their PPE and how to take it off. And just acknowledge them for, for being willing to go into these high risk rooms and do their job to the best of their ability. Again, I think it's all about understanding um, how people feel and acknowledging that. Okay, as I mentioned, these are gonna be short little tutorials this week that we're, that we're gonna to touch on separate, different subjects, environmental services today. Any final words of advice for your fellow infection preventionists and also your colleagues who are, are in EVS uh, going forward? And again, again, you can't avoid COVID-19 as being part of that advice. So I think moving forward, again, IPs need to, um, it would be nice if IPs would collaborate with EVS workers on their units and the areas they cover and um, acknowledge that they do a great job in preventing infections at the bedside and thank them for all their hard work. They have been, during COVID-19, they have stepped up, they have been in the, um, right in the midst of everything. And I think they've done a great job overall. They're sort of unsung heroes. And we don't wanna say heroes, but they're, they're hard workers who have really um, given it their all. So please and thank you are still the magic words. They are, they go a long way. Sharon Ward Four, uh, a member of Infection Control of today's editorial advisory board. She's gonna be giving us advice all week on our little tutorials of what infection professionists need to look out for as we move further into and hopefully out of the COVID-19 era. Sharon, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome.